Math 31, welcome to example 7. So let, let's read through this. It says, at a new job, an employee's starting salary is $32,100. She receives a 2% annual raise. How much will she have earned by the end of 8 years? So we would like to see collectively how much money is she making over the course of these 8 years. That's a different question than what will she make during her 8th year. This is how much will she have earned in total. Right, if I added up all of her annual salaries for those eight years. So let's just get a quick guesstimate of what she would get. Let's, let's pretend that she wouldn't receive any raise at all. So she would make $32,100 all eight years. Then at the end of the eight years, how much would she have had if she made 32,100 times eight? She would have $256,800. So you can imagine for this, this scenario, for this employee, since she is getting a 2% raise, I expect that when I find the sum of how much she's made at the end of the eight years, it'll be a little bit larger than 256,800. Maybe it'll be 260, 270, 280, but somewhere in that ballpark, all right? Now in terms of the raise, we've dealt with raises before. So let me show you the old school way that we've dealt with raises. You could imagine if a person made 32100 her first year and she raise, receives a 2% raise, I think most of you would go, oh, I'll multiply by 0.02. And you'd say, hey, you know what? On her second year, she's going to make $642 more than her starting salary. And you would take 32100 add 642 to it, and you'd say, hey, you know what? During her second year, she's going to make $32,742. And that's correct. All right, but what I would argue is it's faster and more efficient to multiply her base salary, her starting salary, by 1.02. The 1 represents what she originally got her first year, and the 0.02 incorporates her 2% raise. And you see that during her second year, we see that she's getting $32,742. If I wanted to see what she was getting her third year, I would square this number because this is how we build exponential growth. So for her third year, right, she started with 32,100. The next year she went to 32,742. And the third year she was making $33,396.84. All right. And this was that exponential growth we talked about in chapter six, right? We always had our starting value and then we had our power. It had a base and an exponent. When this base is larger than one, we're looking at exponential growth. If this base was ever smaller than one, we were looking at exponential decay. And if the base was equal to one, it was equilibrium, right? If the base was equal to one, she would always make $32,100. All right, well, that's great. That's the old school way of doing it. But I want us to start to make a connection between exponential growth, like we saw in chapter six, and a geometric series, like we're seeing here in chapter nine. So for chapter nine, we're just gonna change our tune a little bit. Instead of using something like a equals pe to the rt, we're going to use the geometric series formula. So we still want our initial value, and that would be in this case the 32,100, right? This is the first term in a geometric sequence. All right. Again, if I wanted a sub 2, we've actually already found a sub 2. Just so we're, we're clear on this, a sub 2 would have been $32,742 a sub 3 would have been, um, what were we up to, $33,396.84. So you could continue that geometric sequence if you wanted. I, and I'm not asking you to, I just want you to see how it relates to stuff we've done before. All right, but ultimately I need this common ratio and we know the ratio here is 1.02. And I say 1.02 because you keep your original salary and then you gain 2% every year, okay? And ultimately, they want the, the total amount of money she's earned at the end of eight years, so I want n to be equal to eight. I want to add up her first eight years of salaries and see what I get. And again, just to remind you, we said if she was getting no raise, if she was getting the same salary all eight years, it would have been 256800 So now let's go ahead and take care of that, that raise and use our geometric series formula. So again, I want to reiterate here, this is a geometric sequence. But I want to add up those eight years, so I really want to get the total after eight years. And the formula we have is a sub 1 
times one minus r to the eighth power, right? And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna divide that by one minus r. So let's see what that turns into for this particular problem. So her initial salary was $32,100. I'm gonna do one times, excuse me, one minus 1.02 to the eighth, and then I'm gonna put that in ratio to one minus 1.02. All right, so let's go crunch this on our calculator and be very careful with all of your, your parentheses, especially when you're dividing by that binomial in the denominator. All right, let's go ahead, see what we've got here. So I'm gonna do 32,100 times one minus, our r was 1.02 raised to the eighth, and then I wanna divide that, and again, in parentheses, one minus 1.02. And let's see what we get here. All right, so we're getting that in the end, she's gonna get about $275,513.31. So slightly more than our, our initial estimate because in this estimate, she was not getting raises. In this estimate, she's getting a 2% raise every year for eight years. So her total is $275,000, or $275,513.31. That is how much she will have at the end of this eight years. So just so we're clear, S of eight will be $275,513.31. All right, and when you see S of eight, we're adding the first eight terms of this geometric sequence. So if I wanted to continue this, I'd have to find A sub four, A sub five, A sub six, A sub seven, A sub eight, and I'd have to add all of those terms and it's just faster to plug it into the geometric series formula. All right, so with that, we're gonna change gears and we're gonna next add not just eight terms in a sequence, we're gonna add an infinite number of terms in a sequence. So, excuse me, in a series. Every series that we've looked at so far has been adding a finite number of terms, right? We added eight terms here, we added eight terms in example six. So once we move to example eight, we're really going to shift we're gonna go away from finite series to infinite series, and it has a whole new formula. All right, so I will see you guys in a bit. Thanks so much, bye.